it's Rashida here coming to tell you why you should not come to Mexico City in 2024. That's right, this is different from my usual video. I'm gonna tell you today why you need to stay away from Mexico City in 2024. Let's get into it. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Rashida Dow and I've lived in Mexico City mostly since 2019. I am a pre-pandemic resident. I have temporary residency in the country and Mexico City is my home base all year round. I love it there. I have loved it there for years since my very first visit in 2016, I believe it was. But this is just not a good time to come to the city. It's not a good time for you and it's not a good time for the city. Now, let's talk about why I'm making this video. I received a great comment the other day from Brad Brad Wright 7333 and he said, well please while I read this, thank you so much for your awesome content. <laughs> You're welcome Brad. Uh, just a quick question for you. What is your take on the water situation in Mexico City? There has been a lot of press here in the US and internationally regarding it and I just wonder what you thought of it and is it still a good time to come to Mexico City long term? Thank you in advance. Great question Brad and I want to address that here. It is a terrible time to come to Mexico City. Um, I hate to be so blunt about it, but Mexico City is experiencing a water shortage right now. And it's a water shortage that is going to impact the city more than it would an average city. So we're gonna talk about why it's so bad, what's going on, and all of those things, why it's relevant to you right here in this video. To answer Brad's question, I am not leaving Mexico City. It's, while I think it's not a good time for people to come visit, it is my home base. I have a lease, I pay rent there. Uh, my landlord expects to get her rent whether, I, whether there's a water shortage or not. So I will be there, I'll be paying rent. Well, I'll be there on and off through the city. Um, for most of my year this year, I'm going to be traveling to other places. Um, so I'm not in the city for a lot of this year. And I'm gonna talk about my thought process knowing what I know now. I didn't plan my year not to be here because of the water shortage, but now that it's happening, it feels like the right thing to do, and I wanna talk about why that is. But first, let me give you some background and some history about exactly what's going on. Right now, around 60% of the entire country of Mexico is experiencing a drought, and it varies from like a mild drought to a severe drought, or in the words of scientists, moderate drought to exceptional drought for 60% of the country. But in nearly 90% of Mexico City is experiencing an extreme drought. So I wanna to talk to you about what that feels like on the ground, how people are experiencing it, and what it would look like if you come. Now when I say if you come to the city, I'm talking to people who want to spend a cute little weekend in Mexico City, you wanna come live long term, you wanna stay for three or four months, none of y'all, don't come, don't come. I promise you, it's not the time. It's not the time. I will tell you when it's time. It is not time right now. Um, trust me, you're, you're gonna, if you don't believe me now, I think you'll believe me by the end of this video, so keep watching. Like I mentioned earlier, the rest of the country is experiencing a drought, but it's not as bad as it is in Mexico City. So I wanna talk about why it's so bad in Mexico City. First, you should know that every year Mexico City has a rainy season. It's like mid-May to end of the summer-ish. It typically rains every day, just a little bit, and then, you know, whatever. That is our rainy season. And so it hasn't really rained in the city since last summer, and this is March now, beginning of March. And it's not scheduled to start raining a lot, the rain we're used to, or the rain in the season we expect, until mid-May. Now, the problem in the, this year is that it has been hotter than normal, climate change. And the problem, is exacerbated because in the last few years, it has rained less than normal in rainy season because what? Climate change. So all of these factors put together make the city just much drier than it was before, less rain, less water accessible than there was before. But also, um, Mexico City has a really old water system. Um, it's called Cutzamala, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, and some of the pipes bringing water to the people are over 100 years old, and they leak. They leak because they're old, they leak because of earthquake damage. Like I said, we get hit by earthquakes, not frequently, but you know, 
enough. Um, and <laughs> we lose 40% of the water that travels through the pipes to get to people. 40% of the water disappears from the source to the people that need it. It's leaking along the way. So when you lose 40% of the water, you know you need a lot of water. You need a lot of water when you're losing 40% of it, and we don't have a lot of water. There is a, uh, I think they call it a catchment basin that is supposed to hold water. Um, not only is it, it's a large one, not only is it empty, it's dry. It's so dry, it's supposed to have water in it. It's so dry that a couple weeks ago, it caught fire and I believe 75 acres burned. 75 acres of a place that's supposed to have water is not only empty, it's so dry, it burned up. We have problems. Um, now, I wanna say this as nicely as I know how. I'm speaking specifically to the selfish ones. And you probably don't think you're selfish, but if you have thought Oh, but when I go to Mexico City, I'm going to stay in a hotel so this won't impact me. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you because this is this is this video is for you um, and not because I think you're a bad person. Right. Like sometimes you have a plan, like especially if you already have tickets to come to the city, like you don't want to change your plan. But I'm going to talk to you about why maybe you should consider changing your plan. All right. Let's talk about what the people in the know not me, but the people in the know are saying might happen this year. Um, scientists, local scientists are saying that we, day zero, which is the day we run out of water, may be June 26th. They're saying end of June, if we don't get the amount of rain that we need in mid-May and June to combat the crisis point we're at right now, day zero, where the whole city is out of water, may be June 26th. That's bad. Now the president of a country is like, what's the problem? Ain't no problem. There's no problem. There's no problem. There's no problem. <laughs> There's, what, are you what are you talking about? And the new mayor of Mexico City said, fake news. And now this may be a very American perspective. But when I hear a politician say fake news, I just feel like you're not really giving it to me straight. Like you're not really giving me the real when you choose to describe something as fake news, especially because in a lot of the neighborhoods and right now it's a lot of the poor neighborhoods, um, a lot of the outlying neighborhoods, they do not have water right now. <laughs> they do not have water in their homes right now. The water that's supposed to be coming to them is not coming to them. So saying something is fake news while people, saying that a water shortage is fake news while there's an existing water shortage that people can point to and say like, yes, in my home, there is no, there's no water, um, is problematic. Now, we have to talk about what it looks like when people don't have water in their homes. And I, I wanna say this up top, I lived in a place for two years where I did not have any indoor plumbing. There was outdoor water access, but no indoor water access. And in that system, we had things set up to survive a non-indoor water situation. Like we didn't have a bathroom inside, but we had an outhouse outside. Now in communities that don't have outhouses, Right? If you don't have an outhouse in your backyard, because we all live in apartments in Mexico City, so there aren't a lot of backyards, <laughs> or most of us live in apartments, or condos. Um, if there's no running water inside, and for some people this is for weeks, what, what's going on in the bathroom? What's, what's going on in the bathroom? People are not showering, or they're showering in recycled water, or they're bathing in recycled water, they are not flushing the toilet because they don't have water to flush the toilet. Um, people are using water from like washing their dishes to flush the toilet if they can. Like they're recycling that water, they're doing things that you as a visitor may not be used to doing. You, if you're coming to stay, you may not want to see poop sitting in your toilet for days because you didn't have the water to flush it. 
it doesn't sound attractive, does it? All right. Now you're coming, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to stay in a hotel. The hotels are fine. No. <laughs> the hotels are running out of water too. And if we hit day zero, the hotels are just going to be out of, out of water. If the city is out of water. So right now what's happening is that some people are able to pay private companies to come truck in water for them. That is being done by the buildings. If you're renting an Airbnb, how will you know if the building you're going to stay in is going to be able to truck in water regularly? There's a local reporter uh, who lives in Mexico City who was doing some reporting on this for PBS. And she said, uh, while she was setting up to record, water stopped running from her pipes. And you could hear about chugga, 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 chugga sound. Her name was Emily Green. I'll try to link to her reporting here. Um, and she lives in an affluent neighborhood in a very, very upscale building. Chugga, 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 no water. The water came 12 hours later when the building trucked in water. So we definitely have a situation right now in Mexico City of the haves and the have nots. And while that, while you may be like, oh, well, when I come to the city, I'm going to be a have, I'm not going to have a problem. It's problematic for a lot of reasons. <laughs> that thought is problematic. It's also untrue, right? If we hit day zero, but private trucking companies aren't going to have, the water companies aren't going to have water to bring in. So no one's going to have water. Also, the more people that come, like I said, we're, uh, we're a metropolis of 22 million people. The more people that come, the less water there is for everyone. So even if you think I'll be fine, know that you're taking water away from a child, from a family. Like you are taking water away. I have the privilege and opportunity to leave this city a few times this year. I'm taking a few trips and traveling. And while not everyone has this privilege, I do think that when you have privileges that you can use for the greater good, you should use them. I'm going to use the privileges that I have to leave the city. And this isn't me abandoning the city in its first moment of hardship. This is me saying, I already planned on being in other places. And what I can do, my choices are, to cancel my trips and stay in Mexico City and struggle, it, struggle with the people who have to be here because they don't have the privilege to leave. Or I can continue on my plans and not come to Mexico City so that there's less people using water in a city that is out of water. I think the right thing for me to do is use my privilege. And I think the right thing for you to do if you have the privilege of not being in the city, of going somewhere else, of vacationing somewhere else, of going for a long-term stay to a different city or a different country, I think you should use that privilege as well for the greater good. And when I say the greater good, I mean for you as well, because you don't want to live like this. If you are coming from a place with regular indoor running water, you do not want to go to a place that's going to run out of water while you're there, right? Hotels are already running out of water. Fancy neighborhoods are already running out of water. Let me give you some quotes real quick. One of the most popular neighborhoods in the city is Coyoacan. Olga Gonzalez, a 50-year-old woman who lives in the neighborhood of Coyoacan, said local officials have been using water tanker truckers to supply water to residents in the area, but there just isn't enough. Sometimes it takes four or five days for the trucks to arrive. Four or five days without water in one of the popular neighborhoods. You don't want that. And even if you might live in a neighborhood, like Condesa is really popular right now with, with foreigners. Even if you're like, oh, no, I'm sure they're going to make sure Condesa has water. I'm sure. They probably are, right? The neighborhoods of Polanco and Roma and Condesa are probably going to be the ones where water is focused. But know that your water usage takes water away from other people because there are people in the city who currently do not have water and that's not going to get fixed by you coming and saying, oh, I didn't notice anything, it was fine. It was fine. We are in a severe water shortage. It's going to get bad. This is the quote that got to me. 
We try to wash our clothes as little as possible. We don't use the shower anymore, she said. We have to leave the water in containers and bathe in jars to try to save as much as possible. We want the little wa water we manage to collect to last a little longer. People are going into the water management system and taking out buckets of water if they can't get a tanker to come to their house, right? In some places, tankers are being Tankers are being protected by armed guards so no one steals the water. I don't know how else to say, like, this is, a, this is a problem, and tourism does not make the problem better. Someone I know watching this is going to be like, well, when I come, I'm going to bring my money, and the city can always use more money. Mexico City, no matter what you hear, Mexico City has money. <laughs> we don't have water. Do not have water. We have money. It is not equally distributed, just like the water will not be equally distributed. But that does not mean that there isn't a problem. Just because you might not see the problem doesn't mean there isn't a problem, right? In my building, when I was back there, I think a month ago, it was in, I've been in my building like two weeks this year, and it's March. Um, but in that two weeks, there was a poster up in the elevators that was pretty much like, y'all need to quit using all this water. Whatever y'all are doing, Here's some ways to use less water because y'all, and I know what that means. That means that we're being, um, we, we get, I get my water from the city, right? If a city runs out of water for us, they're going to have to, this, the building is, it's a condo. So the owners are going to demand that they buy water from somewhere and truck it in. But if they can't buy the water, if it's not accessible, if it costs too much, if it's just too much of a shortage, we're just not going to have water. We're, there are going to be times where there's no water. And I don't want to live like that. And you shouldn't want to vacation like that, especially, like I said, when you're taking water away from somebody else. So before you come to Mexico City in 2024, I want you to think about two things. One, what will your experience be if you are paying for a hotel or an Airbnb or you have moved here? You moved here in May of 2024 and now there's no water. And you can get drinking water. You can buy drinking water. The price is going to go up, right? The price of all our bottled water is going to go up because people are going to start using it. People who can afford to use bottled water for other things are going to use it for other things. Okay, but there's no water coming out of the pipes. You can't flush the toilet. There's no running water to bathe in or your running water is brown. Not a great choice. Move coming in this year and then experiencing that would not be a great choice. But also I want you to think about how you impact the city at large. There are already people who've been out of water and who have been water insecure for years, right? Because in Mexico City, the, there's inequity of how resources are spread. And so if in my fancy building, we're getting a sign indicating that we're gonna be out of water soon, I know that in other parts of the city, they've been out of water for a very, very long time a very long time. And I, I know that it's easy to see all the fun things to do. Oh, you know, I can do this and mezcal and pyramids and Xochimilco and museums. You're hurting the people locally. It doesn't feel like it, right? Like I'm coming in, I'm bringing my tourist dollars and blah, blah, blah. No, <laughs> we can't buy water, right? Like there is no, when we run out of water, we can't be like, hey God, if we give you all the tourist dollars, we give us some water, it doesn't work like that. I want to reiterate that your tourist dollars, while the city would love to have them, they've been getting tourist dollars for a long time and have not fixed this water system, right? So thinking that, oh, well, when I come, it'll help the economy. You're helping property owners, you're helping the rich. Most tourism dollars go to helping the rich get richer. And the rich are not the ones who will be feeling this water crisis the most, right? It's the most vulnerable. It's people with the least amount of money and least amount of political power that will be feeling this water crisis the most. And you'll be doing the most damage to them by coming to the city. So if you can postpone your trip here, your vacation, your long-term move, um, I would. I definitely, honestly, y'all, like even from the most selfish perspective, I could not consider moving to a city if I didn't know if I would be able to flush my toilet in six weeks. 
I just, it's not, as someone who's lived without indoor plumbing, I'm going to tell you, I would be like, what else is on my list of possibilities? Because that's not it for me, right? Not right now. And so just wait, wait until the end of the year, wait until July or August to consider where you might move. Because coming to Mexico City, even as a tourist, is going to harm the city right now more than helping the city, right? We can't, when the, city run, when the private companies run out of water, I don't know where they're getting the water from right now, but they got it. But when they run out, there's not going to be a place to buy water, right? Buildings will be out of water for days at a time. And you may be in one of those buildings. The hotels are not, when there's no water to buy, the hotels won't be able to buy water. Also, I'm gonna tell you something that you may not understand. There's a lot of very wealthy people in Mexico City. If their homes run out of water, but the hotels still have water, they are going to be in the hotels paying prices you would never pay, ever, ever pay. They are going to be in the hotels using that water and you will not be able to afford your vacation in Mexico City. It's not going to... Most of us who live here and who pay attention to what's going on recognize that there is a significant problem in the city, even when the city refuses to acknowledge it. The other day I saw a fountain on, a large fountain just running water, and it pissed me off so badly because like... There are people who can't get water in their homes right now. But in this tourist area, you have this fountain on like it's all good. And it's not all good, right? And paying attention to anything going on, reading anything in the news, should tell every one of us who are in the city, it is not all good. We need to be taking shorter showers. We need to be conserving water as much as possible. We need to be flushing less, even though I know some of y'all are not going to like the sound of that. But that's what we should be doing now to conserve water if you're already in the city, but here goes a city just running a fountain. That water just evaporating into the air, in the heat. Because what the city is saying and the president is saying versus what is really happening are it's apples and potatoes. Now, it's, it's apples and gorillas. They're not even in the same world. It's apples and rocket ships. They're not, they're not aligned at all. Reality, <laughs> the reality. When you hear the local politicians, even the president of Mexico say there's no water problem in Mexico City, what they mean is that the rich people aren't facing a water problem yet. That's what it means. That if you come as a tourist, you may stay in a really nice neighborhood where the owners of the building you're staying in can pay for private water. This is definitely one of those think about your neighbor moments. Even if you're not in Mexico City, so they are not your neighbor, think about the humans here who'll be out of water and what it means for cleanliness, what it means for disease, what it means for all the things that we know happen when there's no water in communities. And this is a community of 22 million people, right? We are still, no matter what anyone says, we are still in the pandemic. When we run out of water, things could get really bad here. I don't want you to be here for your own sake if, it, if things are really bad here. And I don't want you to be here for the sake of the rest of the city if you could be somewhere else. So thank you for thinking about this. Thank you for being a good neighbor around the world, wherever you are. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.